Alright, so in this problem we're told that the path of point P is given in co polar coordinates as R is equal to 4 plus 2 theta, where R is given in meters and theta is given in radians. We're also told that the angle theta is increasing at a constant rate of theta dot. In this problem we're asked to determine the acceleration of P, provided a certain angle theta and a certain value for theta dot, and also to determine if the speed of P is increasing, decreasing, or constant at this instant. Now the first thing we're going to do is note what natural coordinate set we're in. And in this case, I think it's fairly obvious we're in a polar coordinate set, and so we can go ahead and identify our E sub r and E sub theta axes. Of course, E sub r will be pointed radially outward along the radius from the origin, and theta will be perpendicular to that in the direction of increasing theta. Once I have those in place, it's probably prudent to remind ourselves that the velocity in terms of a polar coordinate set is given by r dot in the E sub r, plus r times theta dot in the e sub theta, and that the acceleration vector is given by quantity r double dot minus r times theta dot squared in the e sub r, plus quantity 2 r dot times theta dot plus r times theta double dot in the e sub theta. Now in this problem we're also asked not only for the acceleration of the vector, uh, but or excuse me, the acceleration vector, but we're also asked to determine if the speed is increasing, decreasing, or constant. That is, we're asked to essentially find the sign of the rate change of speed. And then to do that, we're going to have to also express the velocity and acceleration in terms of path coordinates. And so I'm going to remind you that in addition to the expressions I've noted here, the velocity can be expressed as the speed in the e sub t direction, and the acceleration can be expressed as v dot in the e sub t plus v squared over rho in the e sub n using path coordinates. So with this in mind, let's go ahead and solve this problem. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to again start by noting that velocity can be defined as r dot in the e sub r plus r times theta dot in the e sub theta. In the problem statement, we're given that r is equal to 4 plus 2 theta. If I take the time derivative of this expression, r dot, that means I will have the time derivative of a constant with respect to time zero, the time derivative of two theta with respect to time is two times theta dot. Using a similar process, I can also compute r double dot, and if I do that, I'll have r double dots equal to two times theta double dot. At this juncture, I can go ahead and substitute things back in to find velocity. If I do that, I'll have that the velocity vector is given by r dot, which is two theta dot in the e sub r, plus r, which is 4 plus 2 theta, times theta dot in the e sub theta. I know this is also equal to the speed v in the e sub t direction. This, of course, means this is equal to the square root of quantity 2 theta dot squared, which would be 4 theta dot squared, plus the square of 4 plus 2 theta times the square of theta dot. And this will be in the e sub t direction. This, of course, means that I have the e sub t vector is going to be quantity 2 theta dot in the e sub r plus quantity 4 plus 2 theta times theta dot in the e sub theta divided by square root of 4 times theta dot squared plus quantity 4 plus 2 theta quantity squared times theta dot squared. Now you might say, why do I do that? Well, I'm kind of predicating what we're going to need a little later on. Before I evoke that, though, now let's go back to what we really need for this problem. Namely, we need that the acceleration vector is equal to r double dot minus r theta dot squared in the e sub r plus quantity 2 r dot theta dot plus r theta double dot in the e sub theta. At this juncture, we already know quite a bit about r, r dot, and r double dot, and so let's investigate theta. If we go back to the problem statement, we're told that theta is given, theta dot is given, and that theta dot is a constant. The latter has a direct implication in the fact that theta double dot has to be zero. The remaining terms I can simply substitute in. And so if I do that, I'll have r double dot, which is 2 theta double dot, minus r, which is quantity 4 plus 2 theta, times theta dot squared, 
and all of that will be in the isobar direction. And I'll add to that now 2 times r dot, which is 2 theta dot, times an additional theta dot, and that will be in the e sub theta. I can go ahead and clean this up a little bit for us, and if I do that, I'll have that quantity 2 theta double dot minus 4 times theta dot squared minus 2 times theta times theta dot squared in the e sub r plus 4 times theta dot squared in the e sub theta will be the acceleration of the point. That gives us one of the answers we're looking for. The second answer we're looking for is to determine whether or not the speed is increasing, decreasing, or remaining constant. To do this, I'm going to note that the rate to change of speed v dot can be determined by taking the acceleration a and dotting it with the e sub t direction. In this case, I know the acceleration vector a and I know the e sub t direction. I've already found that previously. That's why I went through that step previously. And so we can evaluate the rate of change of speed. And so if I do that, what I'm going to get is quantity 2 theta double dot minus 4 times theta dot squared minus 2 times theta times theta dot squared in the e sub r plus 4 times theta dot squared in the e sub theta and I'm going to dot that with the e sub t unit vector which is 2 theta dot in the e sub r plus quantity 4 plus 2 theta times theta dot in the e sub theta and of course that's all going to be normalized by the speed v which is the square root of quantity 4 theta dot squared plus quantity 4 plus 2 theta quantity squared times theta dot squared. Now at this juncture we can go ahead and simplify the dot product here and if I do that in the numerator recall that like terms dotted together go to 1 different terms go to 0 as long as they're orthogonal unit vectors and so I'll end up with quantity 2 theta double dot minus 4 theta dot squared minus 2 theta theta dot squared all times 2 theta dot plus 4 theta dot squared times quantity 4 plus 2 theta times theta dot divided by the square root of 4 theta dot squared let me make that 2 a little clearer for you plus quantity 4 plus 2 theta quantity squared times theta dot squared. And at this juncture, you can go ahead and put in the numerical values for theta, theta dot, and you can evaluate what this rate of change of speed is. If it's a positive quantity, that tells us that the speed is increasing at this instant. If it's a negative quantity, it tells us the speed is decreasing at this instant. And if that, cons if that value is zero, we'll know that the speed is constant at this instant. From here, it's numerical substitution, so I'll leave that up to you. Best of luck as you work through this problem.